absurd defiance ends here, Hatchling. The appointed time is here. The Hatchling surprises. The enemy for this realm. Armor Stacker is a pretty known build in Path of Exile. It is one of the tankiest builds where you AFK Ubers and you have enough damage to nearly or pretty much insta kill them. However, it isn't famous for being fucking expensive, which is why, although it is very known, it is not so popular even though it is very powerful. The 3.23 Affliction League, also known as Inflation League, where mirror drops like Divines and Divines like Chaos, have put Armor Stackers into a new spotlight for two main reasons. The first one, quite obvious, is that players are fucking rich. The second one, however, is tier 17 maps, where you need a massive amount of tankiness and equal amount of damage to survive and get your benefits from it. When a build starts becoming meta, build makers and content creators have to cater to a well, vaster majority of players who don't have much currency and aren't PoE elitist with 15 mirror builds. However, because it was, and well, still is, a mostly expensive build, not many guides are out there, even though the not so many guides are very good, and so it might be intimidating for those who are new to armor stacking, or you know, didn't know it existed, and wished to get into it, uh, and they might actually get few difficulties, meaning there's so many different variants, they don't know what to do, all the information is always scattered in different areas, so hopefully this guide will be there, while well, this video will be here to help you understand what armor stacking is, and the different paths you have and choices you can make when making an armor stacker. Without further ado, let's actually get into the pros and cons of armor stacking in general. It can be started on quite a small budget with the Doriani setup, and it is also one of the tankiest builds in the game. A lot of players don't like dying, so this build is definitely for them. It has a huge amount of DPS, mostly when you have a very tanky build, your DPS is lacking. However, this is madly tanky and does a stupid amount of damage. It is very powerful in simulacrums, delving, and if not really made on a budget, budget builds not so much, but normally it is completely broken against bosses. It can be scaled to pretty much infinity. You can start it with, uh, you know, a few dozens of divines and scale it up to a few dozens of mirrors. So it is, you know, pretty much a linear curve upwards. Well, not a linear curve, it's pretty much a linear line. So the more currency you invest, the stronger your build is, and you're going to feel the difference whenever you put currency, which is often something that doesn't happen with most builds. Some setups can be made pretty much entirely or almost entirely with cheap uniques, such as the Duriani Aegis setup, where you basically have just your clusters and maybe your rings that aren't uniques, and then the rest is just normal standard looking uniques, which can be very nice for people who don't want to invest much or break their head with buying rare items and you know have difficulty new players, stuff like that. On the con side though, some setups require those specific uniques, which often don't exist during league, well, they don't exist during league start, or they fetch for a very high price when it's the beginning of the league because they are more valuable to certain players. Also, armor stacking can be quite scary to get into. It is a more complex type of build, and it has so many variants, You a lot of players are actually lost when deciding what to do with their armor stacking. It also is not so good at mapping, okay? Armor stacker is just an armor stacker. You're not supposed to... Well, I mean, you can. Obviously, you can because you deal enough damage and you don't die, so you can be doing maps. However, you will not be as efficient and as quick as a mapping build. Dot damage will hit you at like a truck. Basically, um, it will destroy your HP. However, it can be mitigated with few items, but in the beginning, especially in the entry point, it is something to look out for. Some of the variants of the armor stacking have a very high entry cost, which means they are locked behind a lot of divines and sometimes maybe mirrors. So you, if you play on a budget, it might some actual armor stacking, the ones that actually interested you, might be locked behind a higher paywall where you cannot actually play them and you would have to play a variant that doesn't interest you. However, I am sure that all the variants in armor stacking is very fun, so it might be a con, but you'll have another armor stacking to play with. Now let's talk about your budget and reputation, okay? I wanted to have a small section for that specifically. The reputation of armor stacking is that you need mirrors to make it work, okay? And you will see a lot of players and a lot of people probably in the comments telling me and telling you that you shouldn't be playing this build on a budget. 
However, it is not because somebody doesn't understand or didn't feel like or has been playing the build for a long time that they would know what you would feel on a lower end. You can play the build on a lower budget. Is it the best? Obviously not. You can't compare a 10 divine or a 50 divine or even a 100 divine build armor stacking compared to multiple mirror. It is a different, completely different realm. And you would look at both build and you would tell yourself these aren't the same builds. Well, that's also the part of the fun in this build is the more currency you put into, the better your build is and the more things you discover and the more, well, less reactive you have to be while playing the game because, well, you simply cannot die. But you can definitely do all the content in the game very easily with a mid-budget type of build without having to spend a mirror. Not even half of a mirror is required to make this build very strong. Now, the 3.23 league has caused uh, a messed up economy, so the next league might be, uh, you know, quite the recession in terms of price. We do not know, and that remains a mystery. However, don't get into this video thinking you need multiple mirrors to start playing Armor Stacker. It is a lie. It is not true. It is either gatekeeping or ignorance. So the first choice you're going to have to do when making an Armor Stacker is going to be which class are you going so I'm going to be explaining all of the classes needed. And the first one is going to be the Sign class. We're going for the Sign class for the single Ascendancy, the Ascendant. What does the Ascendant do? It offers an actual mini version of all the Ascendancies possible. The first Ascendancy we'll be choosing is the Champion. It is 100% required. Why? Because there are two points after that. There is a Ascendancy point which makes you start your tree from where the duelist is, which is very important because you need a few keystones that are of utmost importance in that section of the tree. The second point, or the second mini ascendancy you can choose for, is either Occultist, Guardian, Berserk, or Deadeye. Deadeye is usually reserved for projectile skills only. I suggest either Occultist or Guardian, and then use the Forbidden Flame or Flesh combo with Berserk or Deadeye, or just spec into whichever one is the most expensive with Forbidden fle uh, Flame and Flesh, so you don't have to actually pay the jewels, and then get jewels for the third ascendancy that you want. Sign builds are CI builds only. What does CI mean? That means you are using Chaos Inoculation, which renders your HP at one, but makes you immune to any type of Chaos damage. It is a very nice line of defense because, well, you just don't even take any damage. You can play the build at quite a nice small budget and you can do an overcap swap, which I will explain a bit later, quite fast if charm still exists. So if charms don't exist or if that which was taken does not exist after this view is made, completely forget about this swap. But if it still exists, this is probably one of the best swaps you can go for. The end version of the sign is the 100% physical damage taken as or PTA transcendence setup. It is the strongest armor stacker in the game. However, it is the most expensive. It is nearly immortal, or I would say literally immortal. It cannot die. Uh, however, the DPS is not as high as some other versions. However, you are still doing hundreds of millions of damage, so it's kind of overkill anyways. Now, how to start as a sign on League Start or Early League? Well, it will depend what you mean by League Start. League Start by, okay, the League just opened, what's my first character? No, you cannot League Start a, or a, uh, sorry, a armor stacker. However, you can play sign on day one as League Start, and the best way of doing so would be an Orobot. I do not suggest, for the love of God, I do not suggest playing sign as your first character during League Start. It is awful, unless you are very talented or you know how to play this game very well. My suggestion is going Orobot. However, this requires a group play, but Orobots are the most valuable build in League Start, okay? Everyone wants an Orobot in their group. For the average player, the average Joe, you know, the average dad Path of Exile player who only plays maybe one or two hours a day, I suggest League Starting as a normal League Start. And then once you have enough currency and enough budget and the economy is slightly stable, you then swap to a sign to make your armor stacker. When swapping to an armor stack, uh, to a sign, sorry, I suggest watching a guide on how to level a sign because it is the hardest character to level. Once you reach level 68, I suggest either becoming a map leecher, which is completely free and you get a ton of XP, or going into a five weight, which can cost you, a, you know, some divines, for the maximum amount of XP and, you know, to, uh, to be at your level as quickly as possible. 
You can then swap to an armor stacker once you have the Doriani Aegis set up at level 90. I suggest level 90 and not below. If you really, really, really want below, you can go at level 86, but do not go a single level below. The second class you can play in armor stacker is the Marauder, and the Marauder actually has two interesting ascendancies. Before we get into the ascendancy, uh, both Marauders play CI, so Chaos Inoculation, and this time mostly we'll have two swords on the end game. You can go for the Aegis setup, which I suggest if you're doing it on a budget, but the end versions have two swords, which means you have a lot more damage than a sign version. However, your EHP will be lower. If we go f Chieftain, the Chieftain Ascendancy is very interesting. First of all, any increase in your fire resistance is applied to your cold and lightning resistance at 50%, which means if you have plus 100% fire resistance, you have plus 100% fire resistance, plus 50% cold and plus 50% lightning. This means you can scale just fire resistance and get all of your elemental resistance needed. You also have a midden, a mini forbidden, uh, sorry, a mini for uh, melding of the flesh, where you actually ha any increase in the maximum fire resistance equals to a maximum increase in cold and lightning resistance, which means you can save quite a bit of currency, especially early on, with this ascendancy point. However, when going for Chieftain, you will need the Forbidden Jewels and Flame for the Juggernaut, Unbreakable, or if charms still exist, you can just buy a charm where you apply your armor to f Lightning, Fire, and Cold damage. On a medium to even a uh, quite high budget, I think the Chieftain is better if the charms don't exist after the 3.23. If the charms still exist, it might be a subject of a debate whichever if chieftain or sign is better now the second ascendancy of the marauder that you can go for is the juggernaut you don't need any forbidden jewels which means it is a lot better earlier on however you will need the melding of the flesh because you don't have the ascendancy from the chieftain you will gain enough accuracy and attack speed with it thanks to the jug and you have increased life regen rate which is good for kaom or if you go zeloth oh for the leak start for the marauder is it viable day one as an armor stacker no however marauder is very powerful in leak start the best and suggestion i should give for new players would be going for the bone shattered juggernaut which is one of the tankiest leak starter and will give you the feel of what being tanky is other builds can be leak started with a marauder however i'm not a pro so i will not be you know saying words just for saying words you should watch guides, but I know, and well, Marauder uh, is very good at leak starts. You can do a Doriani and Aegis swap very early on, and the overcap swap can be might can be made quite earlier, faster than a sign. So you can go for the like you know the end game version faster than a sign if the charms don't exist. Now, which one to choose, Jug or Chief? Very early in the league and on a low budget, go for the Jug because you would need. Uh, forbidden jewels for chief however the moment you're able to buy those forbidden flame and flesh for the unbreakable go for chieftain it is a lot better finally the last class is going to be the duelist and the ascendancy is champion this build is a non-ci so non-chaos inoculation so you actually have hp and not energy shield the reason why is because it takes too many points to go upwards to chaos inoculation so you would lose too much power however it is the highest amount of dps you can get out of armor stacking the tankiness is not high, however. The existence of the charms and that which was taken can make the tankiness quite high. However, the fact that you're not Chaos Inoculation and you would need those charms and a lot of armor to be able to equal what the Marauder or what the Scion does is not worth it, right? So if you don't really care that much of being super tanky, go for the champion. But if you really care about being very tanky, have a well-rounded armor stacker, it is um, not the best option. It does use two swords and you can go for the Doriani swap very early. And you can also use Aegis with, if you stack enough energy shield and it can be useful and it can use pretty much the similar mechanics. However, you will need a higher investment for that because as I said, you have HP, you would have to get HP as well as energy shield to be able to to scale that duelist is very strong in league start you cannot league start as an armor stacker with the duelist however you can league start with a duelist there's so many so many so many different ways champion is one of the best league starter you can also go for the bone, bone shatter slayer which is also very cool very strong and you can do the swap as said earlier for the Doriani and maybe the Doriani quite easily during the league however be careful because you will not be as strong as other builds so if you're watching showcases of a chieftain or a sign 
you know, AFKing waves of simulacrums, it might not be the case for the champion. Now that this is out of the way, you're going to have to learn how to, well, make an armor stack. And there are multiple choices you have to do to make your armor stacker. The first one is, do I want to go for the Doriani? Or do I want to go for the overcap? The Doriani is your stacking negative lightning resistance and the overcap is your stacking positive resistance, either fire or cold. Then the second choice you have to make is either do I want to go transcendence? Do I want to have armor application? Or do I want to be an Aegis abuser? What's really cool about that is you can actually play Doriani with application of armor and be an Aegis armor, Aegis abuser. You can go Doriani with transcendence and Aegis abuser. You can go overcap with application of armor. You can go overcap with transcendence. You can go overcap with Aegis transcendence. You can do so many choices. However, it is important to understand all five types and that is well understood. So you can then do the best choice. There are different mechanics when playing the armor stacker and for the Doriani armor stacker is the negative lightning resistance stack. Doriani is a unique body armor, which uh, makes that you cannot deal lightning non-lightning damage. Also, armor applies to lightning damage taken from hits, but your lightning resistance does not affect your lightning damage taken, which means whether you have negative, zero, or positive lightning resistance, it changes nothing. The last mod, where nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours, pushes you to get negative lightning resistance. You don't have downsides of getting the negative lightning resistance, and the upside is your enemies will literally have well, negative lightning resistance. This will effectively double, triple, maybe quadruple the amount of damage you can deal to a certain enemy. For those who do not understand what nearby is for Doriani specifically, it is in a radius of six meters or 60 units, which is basically 75% of your whole screen. On the Doriani types, there are not many ways of scaling armor except with aura effect and flasks. The second setup for armor stacking or increasing your armor is going to be the overcap. The overcap is basically getting the most amount of resistance overcap. Our goal is to have the highest amount of overcap, effectively going to be a resistance stacker. Now, why do we become resistance stacker? Well, there are mods on either a helmet or a body armor for the unique or just on body armors for rares. That increases either your fire resistance or your cold resistance, depending on, sorry, it will either increase your armor if you have overcapped fire or increase your evasion rating if you have overcapped cold. If you had to choose between one or the other, the best one would be the overcapped cold because as we've seen, or well, we will see actually, uh, evasion can double dip on the armor. And so the goal of this build is really, you know, obviously get a lot of armor and thanks to evasion and termination. And then thanks to all of that elemental resistance, we are increasing by five, six, 700% your amount of armor, making it, well, multiply by five, six or seven times. So very powerful. In terms of your defense as an armor stacker, the first and strongest one is the transcendence. Transcendence is a keystone that you can get by having a militant faith under the name of Maxarius or whatever his name is, and it will transform any keystone in the radius into transcendence. What does transcendence do? It are armor applies to fire, cold, and lightning damage taken from hits instead of physical damage, and you have a minus 15% to all elemental resistance. What's really cool about this keystone? Let's say you take 50,000 fire damage. If you have a 90% elemental resistance, you only take 5,000 damage. Now with transcendence, if you have a 90% uh, physical reduction, it will apply 90% to the 90% of uh, the 10% of that passes your resistance, which means instead of taking 5000 damage, you actually take 500, you take 1% of elemental any elemental damage, it is completely broken, and it is completely bunkers. There are two downsides to transcendence, however, first one is instead of physical damage, this means there is nothing that saves you from upcoming incoming physical damage, where you could basically get one shot very easily. This obliges you to be something called 100% PTA or 100% physical damage taken as. We will shift the damage, we will shift physical damage into other types of damage. We can shift our damage into chaos damage, which is the best because we are immune to chaos damage, which means we simply do not take that amount of damage. And then the rest will be shifted into elemental damage, whether fire damage thanks to our shield, cold damage with our, our flask, fire damage with our passive, and many other ways. So we will just simply shift 100% of that physical damage into elemental damage, which means there is nothing that can really kill us because we are 100% immune to chaos. We do not take any physical damage because it is shifted into elemental damage. And we only take, if well done, 1% of any elemental damage taken. Now, this is very expensive as a build, and you would usually need at least 95% 95% physical damage taken as to be very, very, very tanky. 
so the price the entry point is also quite expensive it is also important to note with the second downside of transcendence is the minus 15 percent to all maximum elemental resistance this will make it very hard for us to get to 90 percent all res because we will be starting with 60 percent maximum resistance instead of 75. in league it is pretty much impossible to do that with the transcendence setup it is very very hard and uh, i mean you could potentially however you'd be sacrificing way too much for that the second way of scaling your defense would be the application of armor it is quite straightforward a certain percentage of your armor is applied to elemental hits is basically a mini transcendent however you do not have the downside of not having your armor applied to physical which means you do not need to be physical damage taken as or pta and you do not have minus 15 percent to maximum elemental resistance however because uh, you do not need to go 100 physical damage taken as in deep delve sometimes you can die from physical hits but that is extremely 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 rare as well because it's only a small percentage even at eight percent it is basically impossible to be 90% reduction on the elemental hits as well if it's a big hit small hits yes if it's a big hit it is very hard if we take the example of the unbreakable which is 8% at 1 million armor that 8% is only a mere 80,000 so it is not that high of a number but don't forget we do not have that minus 15% which means we are also at 90% elemental resi max resistance which is pretty much impossible for transcendent setup in league finally the third way of scaling your defense like nuts is being an aegis enjoyer or an aegis abuser whichever you want to choose when you're using aegis the moment you block you have max energy shield why because it says re replenish energy shield by two percent of armor when you block because we're armor stacking we have multiple hundreds of thousands at a low budget and millions of armor on a normal mid budget and high end if we're talking about really low budget at 500,000, which is very easy to achieve, you basically get 10,000 energy shield on block. And considering nobody has 10,000 energy shield as an armor stacker, except if it's very high end, you are basically immortal to any hits that you're able to block. However, that does not protect you from one shots and massive hits. So if a hit is above your maximum hit pool, it will instantly kill you. But as long as the hit is below your hit pool, you are immune you're literally like immune of dying. Uh, as you can see in the picture, your effective hit pool with Aegis is infinite. To set the record straight, armor stackers are basically a subgenre of aura stackers. We are stacking the most amount of auras and aura effect on ourselves to get the most amount of armor evasion as well as offense, well, making our other auras a lot stronger. That is why you're going to see your tree riddled with only aura effect, mana reservation efficiency, and introspections. That is literally the goal of our build is going to be stack the most amount of armor and the most amount of aura effect before i get into smite there are two ways of stacking the aura effect is either by increasing the level of our gems or by increasing their effect and we're going to be doing both in our build now to get on with smite smite is a skill as well as an aura and now a lot of players will see smite as an aura stacker and they find this item not well this skill not interesting so they won't add it to your build it is important to add smite into every single aura stacking build why because as i said it's also an aura when you hit an enemy you gain an aura for four seconds which grants you a lot of added flat lightning damage and in a lot of build, that aura is responsible for 50% of your damage. So how do we actually scale our armor into hundreds of thousands and millions? Well, the first thing is we're not only stacking armor, but also evasion, thanks to our keystone called Iron Reflexes, where we convert all of our evasion rating into armor. That is why actually getting more evasion is better, because we can scale evasion, and once the evasion is transformed into armor, it can then be scaled as well, so you're kind of double dipping. Now, that doesn't mean we cannot scale any armor, because or else there wouldn't be a point of transforming uh, all that evasion into armor it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense so by increasing both of them quite equally but having more aura effect on our grace we will be gaining a lot of armor and how do we scale that more is by increasing our aura effect with the gem level or by stacking a lot of aura effect Finally, our flasks will help a lot, as well as our gear will give us a nice base amount of evasion and armor. Now, there's also the discussion and question of do I go Kaom or not for the Berserk buff. Berserk buff will grant you in total a 44% increase in DPS 
and a 30% more movement speed as well as a 19% less damage taken. Now the debate is, do I go for the Kiln Spirit with Berserk or do I use Energy Shield Rare Gloves? In terms of damage, Berserk wins by a mile. Yes, the Rare Gloves will give you Lightning Exposure and can also help you strike additional nearby targets, which is very good for clear. Berserk is simply a better choice. However, Berserk does require you to transform all of your life regeneration into rage, which means you cannot have increased energy shield regeneration thanks to your life regeneration, thanks to Zealoth Oath. I know it's a lot of thanks to, but you transform your life regen with Zealoth Oath into energy shield regen, and you are blocked from doing so by using Kiln Spirit. Now, there's also the terms of, yeah, but I have more energy shield. Berserk gives you 19% less damage taken. And in terms of tankiness, it is, well, you can take more damage thanks to Berserk than if you went for rare gloves. The thing is, Berserk has kind of a bit of a low uptime because of Kaom's nerf, which means in general and in average, it is better in terms of tankiness to go for rare gloves. What I would do as a player is to go for the Kaom and Berserk buff in the beginning because we are lacking severely of damage and movement speed. But once I have a quite nice mid to high end budget build, I will go to rare gloves. Another mechanic that can be very confusing for a few players is what the hell is up with resolute technique and elemental overload. The main aspect of our build is really armor, which means we're going to be using all of our resources to get the most amount of armor and the most amount of aura effect. That implies that we cannot put any resources really into critical strike chance and hit chance and critical multi. This means players are often going to have to choose whether they want to go Resolute Technique or Elemental Overload. Let's first talk about Elemental Overload. Skills that have dealt a critical strike in the past 8 seconds deal 40% more elemental damage with hits and ailment. However, you can your critical strikes does not deal extra damage. This keystone, if you want to dumb it down, means I need to have not that much of a high crit chance because there's no point in critting. However, it has to be a bit high enough, just enough, for me to be able to crit consistently in less than 8 seconds. This stops you from having to scale any type of critical multi and pretty much any type of critical strike chance. You just need maybe 10% and you'll be just fine. However, why would I not go for Elemental Overload and for Resolute Technique where I can my hits cannot be evaded, but I can never deal critical strike chance? Inherently, Lightning Strike and Smite, if I remember correctly, have a 70% chance to hit. If you put precision with a level aura effect, we have a 100% hit chance, so why do I go Resolute Technique? Well, Resolute Technique has a nice synergy with other keystones which are very powerful. A good example of that is Precise Technique. 40% more attack damage if accuracy rating is higher than maximum life. However, you can never deal critical strikes. There are a few, you know, synergies where you cannot deal any cr critical strikes, but you have extra damage thanks to that. And that is the reason why we would go Resolute Technique. If you had to choose between Resolute Technique and Elemental Overload just with them and not having anything else, Elemental Overload is better by far. However, when you pair other synergies, Resolute Technique is often the better option. And finally, what the fuck is up with our tree? Whenever we look at Armor Stacker, you see the most amount of clusters and the most amount of jewels for what you would believe no reason or for very deep looking, very, you know, dark side-ish reasons. It is not because they want to throw away currency. It is because those jewels and the passive points that we aim for are the essence of our build, which is aura effect and something called introspection. Those little clusters that you see are mana reservation efficiency clusters, which means the more mana reservation efficiency, the more efficiently we can reserve our auras. Example, if we have a 100% mana reservation efficiency of skills, our auras, if they had to take 50% mana the 50 of our you know, mana, they would only take 25%. So this will help us stack the most amount of auras. The second reason we stack all of those clusters is to get introspection, where auras from your skill have a 10% increased effect on you. That is very good because, as we said, aura helps us get more armor, more evasion, and better auras. Finally, another reason why you would go for the clusters is because you can get additional mods on them, such as, for example, dexterity, which is, well, attributes for your attribute requirements, and resistance. In the example right there, you see a 9% to cold resistance. That is very good. It has a 35% increase effect, so it's actually 12%, and you have two of them every time. So when you do the calculation, and when you have a total of nine, uh, yeah, so, sorry, nine clusters, well, you basically get plus 100% of cold resistance. 
that is 100% increased armor. So those clusters are very strong. The rest of her tree is basically getting the keystones needed, such as unwavering stance, iron reflex, elemental overload, or precise technique. Stuff. And then the rest of your passive points are basically just aura effect mana reservation efficiency. That is the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned a lot. If you wish me to to make more guides on armor stacking or most specifically more build guides on armor stacking, let me know in the comments down below and feel free to join the Discord. We are now 6,500 people. There are a lot of players there that have fun or help other players if you have any difficulty and you can always talk to me there.